I'm pretty happy about the fact that many people might rediscover or discover uh, the work of Heinz Mack in France and realize how important it is, especially regarding um, the datations of the works, uh, since many artists have been widely influenced by uh, Heinz Mack and this aspect makes him a master, makes him historical. And if art is just about creating images, I mean, art could be dead. Fundamentally, the question that he formulated through his work from the early 1950s are very contemporary. Uh, how a work today is not only an image, but a phenomenon in itself. And I'm pretty sure that his actual success is definitely linked with this will to uh, get rid of the image and propose something that goes beyond the world of the image that surrounds us, uh, that manipulates us all the way, that hypnotizes us. Mac, in 1957, after having worked already for seven years uh, exploring uh, Matisse, uh, exploring Picasso, doing kind of very rough sculptures with simple forms, uh, kind of aggressive, uh, sculpture, uh, never round, but always with peaks, something basically going already going out of the uh, physical support. Um, he went slowly in 1956, 1957 to uh, the monochrome, and that's exactly at this time that he is one of the two founding members with Otto Pino of the Group Zero. The Group Zero is not exactly a group in the classical sense of the term, it's also a movement. Let's say it's a group uh, with a variable geometry uh, as it involved uh, many artists, let's say from 2 to 3 to 10 or to 100 or almost 200 at the moment. It was really a tendency in the end and Mac was really at the center of it. Uh, he established very strong connections with the uh, with artists uh, living in Paris, like Yves Klein, of course, Soto, uh, Spoeri, uh, Tingeli. Uh, that was very important for him, and that's how he he, he brought his work to a higher level uh, until the dissolution of the group in 1966. It was a really collective movement that he was animating uh, along with Otto Pino and later in 1962 they were joined by Gunther Hooker. Uh, so this whole nebulosis uh, was, is really important to understand Heinz Mack's own nebulosis. And this exhibition here is made with uh, different um, sections actually uh, having a dialogue between uh, one and the other and Everything is related to um, the phenomenon of perception. I considered, I really took it seriously in consideration, that the whole European culture, which started during the Renaissance, or even already before the Renaissance started, so all in all, during the last 700 years, Everything had been invented and done concerning painting. But I also realized that Picasso, he really changed the situation in a radical, in a very radical way too, by his analytic cubism. In this case, Picasso destroyed everything what had been done 700 years long. It took some time to realize that such an analytic Cubism is not a composition anymore. What Yves Klein called the dépassement de popularité des arts. It was this very hot and strong desire to get rid of all this drama of killing people and of um, bringing our Jesus on the cross and his nails and all this. this to give up this drama of composition, and instead of the composition, we developed a kind of structure. It was the idea that a painting, or what we yeah, used as a kind of painting, was a field of 
expansion of energy. It was this desire to do a kind of structure consisting of a very simple principle. The principle is just to take one little note and to bring this into a kind of rhythm and repetition. Repetition step by step, and all these little steps had been of a very equal sensitivity and equal importance for the whole structure, and it was very difficult to figure out how much can this repetition go on, because there was a danger involved too. If you go on, go on, and if you don't stop, then it will become very lonely somehow. And we wanted to concentrate this energy on a certain space. Recently, we know quite well that the nature of scientists do have similar um, principles. And um, it's still an open question. How does it go along with each other? What is the real meaning, the real sense of this very miraculous um, similarity between what we do in the arts and what the natural scientists do. That's one point of view, and the other one is that I wanted to get rid of the old technique, painting with the brush and with color and so on, and um, mainly I felt like a sculptor. It was quite a totally new approach, and um, I also wanted to do sculptures which are really a kind of instrument for the explosion and for the expansion of energy in a large space. The relation between intensity of light, between the dimension of the space, and how this went together that was really something important because now an, another dimension came to the classical three ones, the dimension of time. That was also a very, very strange experience that in a desert, a space without any limitation, without any borders, without any horizons, does have a very special time which does not go along with your watch. It's a brand different, a brand <laughs> yeah, new experience of time. So the fourth dimension really had a certain meaning for my sculptures too. So, and so that's only one point of view. Of course, there are a lot of other points too which could be discussed. <laughs>